Okay, we've got all the pieces cleaned up, rinsed off, and we're ready to put this back together. I was thinking about how best to do this. Uh, I think that uh, since this isn't a very complicated carburetor, that I'm just going to uh, put it on time lapse. I'm kind of running out of memory on this this phone here, so it, it'd probably take a lot of uh, time and a lot of editing later. So we're going to save the uh, more instructional carburetor overhaul or carburetor reassembly uh, for another day. But uh, one thing that we did notice and we'd like to pass along before we get started is this uh, carburetor number did not come up on uh, Mike's list. And so it was very difficult for him to, to uh, send me the exact parts. He said there's a few versions, so I had to get some extra parts. Anyway, uh, I just, I tried and tried to, to figure out what those numbers were and it just did not match up to anything that, uh, that he had. So tried all different kinds of combinations. But anyway, on his website, and once again, this is where you scan it. So instructional sheet is what we have here. We printed it out. And on his list, it was PK108. And you can uh, just go ahead and get that off their website. And the best thing is just to follow their instructions. Uh, this is just standard set of instructions. Some of these pieces are not there. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and check off which ones we're putting together and which ones we're not, and then show you at the end. So if there's a particularly difficult piece or something that takes a little extra time, we'll go ahead and stop the video and, and run that. Uh, we did actually end up painting this. The outside we masked off the end after we'd cleaned it all up. We just couldn't handle that rust. We're gonna leave that, that bolt in there. Uh, since we don't have a fitting that would make that either a nice clean plug or some other kind of uh, you know fitting that would look halfway decent so we're just going to leave that one thing that i did not do on the disassembly uh, which i did later is i had the main jet not removed and then the power valve uh, not r removed so there was a, a smaller ball behind that and a spring and that is for this piece right here 16 and 14 which they call a ball power valve and spring power valve so anyway uh, that's pretty much it we're gonna go to time lapse and then we'll cut back for a few of these uh, more technical things if it looks like there's an issue so All right, here we go.
Okay, we're back with this uh, carburetor, so final assembly. Um, after this, we'll move on to the section where we do the adjustments on it. Uh, I was thinking about this, and I just could not let this spring go for the accelerator pump check ball circuit. And that's this series here. That's the stake that kind of holds it in there, and that's the spring that I'm going to use, and that's the check ball. So that goes right in there. And the purpose of that is to hold pressure on that check ball so that this well will fill up uh, plenty so that you can shoot uh, plenty of, uh, well, not that well, but the, uh, that circuit, the accelerator pump circuit will fill up all the way to the top. So when you punch it and that accelerator goes down, accelerator pump, that it's ready to squirt that fuel in there right away. It doesn't have to fill, up, fill that well up. So we're going to put that in there, if we can do that, boink, and then this is going to go on here, like so, and that's going to do this one-handed. And I'll tap that in there a little bit later. The other thing I should have gotten when I was at the, the nuts and bolts department was some more of these screws. These things are always wearing out. That one doesn't look too bad. But this is on the top. And uh, yeah, there's one that's a little bit chewed up. So that's a, just an appearance thing. The threads are OK. Sometimes uh, these threads will look kind of chewed up, but it's usually the pot metal material from inside the carburetor that this was over tightened. And speaking of over tightening, there's another few spots in here that can cause this to warp. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Um, by the way, they call these uh, cheese head screws. I don't, I thought the guy was making that up, but uh, I saw some literature on it and that's what they call them. But, uh, but he couldn't find me. Uh, I couldn't find the exact one right, right yet. Anyway, this is what's left of the carburetor kit. There's plenty of pieces left over. Uh, this could probably service, at least allow you to take the top off of one of these carburetors, as long as it's the same style. The newer ones have slightly different uh, carburetor tops. So there's like three different carburetor top gaskets in there. And try to remember, like I forgot, to put this gasket on before you put the floats on. And, uh, you might have noticed that I had it on this part, but uh, luckily that, that turned out. So uh, these metal parts, uh, or the, uh, the parts that were rusting, like this base, I ended up scrubbing that and then painting it with this titanium color. Where is that? Uh, I'll put it away. But it's a titanium uh, color. That's what they call it. Same thing with... With these screws and also some of these other parts, a little bit of an offset uh, color to make it look a little flashy. So, anyway, uh, that's it. We'll measure the float level and show you some of the other adjustments. All right.